All right, we're here for a quick look at the tea kettle banjo. Uh, this started out as something in my brain that I had to get out, and it was based on uh, finding or seeing one of these copper tea kettles at an antique mall, and my instinct instantly, for whatever reason, was that has to be a banjo. And I saw it kind of all together in one go, which was that it would have a handy handle, um, that the bottom would become the pot, right, you can hear it resonate. And I look like an absolute maniac going around, you know, picking up different tea kettles and hearing what they would sound like. Um, but I saw in my brain kind of the strings going across the spout or out of the spout, across the bottom here and onto the neck. And so instantly I knew I had to try this. And I tried to sell it to a few people over the last couple of years and nobody really kind of bit onto it. So I thought I'd make it for myself or if anybody else wants it. Um, it'll be up for sale, I guess. So, but I just really like it right now. Uh, but anyways, uh, some fun little details about this, one of which is that uh, it has flush fret copper frets. And so I inlaid copper into here and then filed them flat so you could uh, play like a fretless but you can see all your frets. Um, if you haven't seen the video series, I actually did a whole build on this series so you can see me make it. Um, it's in the channel wherever, I'll put a link below. Uh, but the top of this is carved into an anchorless leaf kind of minstrel, you can see the minstrel style kind of banjo inspiration here. Um, and I thought it'd be really fun to have something super ornate on something super generic or basic as a pot or a uh, literal like tea kettle. Um, and the heel carving, which you'll see some details of in a second, we'll see some glamour shots at the end. Um, when I started making that, I had a friend of mine, Tommy Case, say, you know, you could always put that uh, neck on a different banjo. Uh, thinking that it's so ornate or finely crafted that it deserves something better than this, which I completely disagree. I love the contrast of something very ornate on, on this. Um, the other funny side perk, I knew it would have a handle. I'd leave the handle on there, um, not just as a carrying thing, because it's kind of out of balance for carrying, but it ended up serving a really fun purpose, which is you can hold it against your body and hold the banjo away from you, but it also obviously kind of collapses and you can put it on your leg and that keeps the pot off of you like a leg rest, um, which I think is great. So I didn't build an armrest. I thought I'll put an armrest on here, maybe at some point in the future. Uh, the back comes off. I have the lid off right now. So here's the uh, lid, right? So that, um, yeah. So we'll run it. You can, he we'll hear it. Um, I'll do some details up close uh, here in a bit. Uh, it has ebony peg tuners, the uh, just regular friction pegs and a cocobolo fingerboard, maple and cherry neck, the maple carving top, and part of the heel cap is a piece of mahogany that runs through onto the sound post. Um, yeah, that's about it. A lot of copper, a lot of fun little details. So, we'll look up close, then we'll hear some sound and see some glamour shots. Okay, so you can see up close here the minstrel silhouette, the style of this. Um, but I wanted it to be not only a little fancier, but much more dimensional. So I did this ink at the sleeve, uh, kind of flare, but you can also see I wanted the strings from the beginning. I wanted the strings to run up under or through the headstock. I thought that was quite interesting and unique. You see it there. I have a piece of copper laid up in here under there um, just for an accent. I didn't do anything ornate on the back. I thought about it, seriously thought about it, doing a carving on the back, but I didn't want to, you know, fussy it up because there's already going to be a lot of stuff going on with the pegs, tuners, and everything else. Um, I did leave, however, there we go, a little carving on the back here at the fifth peg. And I thought that was nice. I took it off, put it on, took it off again. You can see it in the videos uh, link below. And then down here we have our heel carving. So you can see all of that. I had it uh, a G for Graham Instruments. The G actually, my mom and I picked it out. My mom used to be a calligrapher. And so we went through a lot of her kind of uh, books on typefaces and picked one out that I thought was pretty fitting. But you see some much more details of that in the, uh, the process videos. Here is our bottom there. You can see the nameplate, as well as if you see a little brass disc in the back, that's the pickup right in the center underneath the bridge so I have it uh, so you can plug it in. So here's the input and the volume knob. All right. And then here's where the strings come out of the spout. I actually have a piece of cherry in there. And uh, so you can see that. I don't think you can see it in there. But down in there, there's a piece of wood. And that's what actually 
the strings go through the metal and through the wood and tie off. And that way it's not uh, so dramatic of tension on that metal. And also it won't break the strings. So the, the metal is kind of flared out to accept the string, um, but not really impact it. I was gonna build a tailpiece, but this ended up working out just fine sitting right there. Um, it holds tension and pressure just fine. So like I said, I have a maple bridge. There's some cool details. I'll show you some glamour shots here in a little bit. Uh, but this is a Revere copper tea kettle uh, from 1801 is the company manufacturers, I guess. Obviously, this is not that old. They used to be chrome plated uh, copper, and so all the chrome got off, uh, except for this stuff, which I kind of like the contrast of. But yeah, that's it close up. So let's hear it. All right, so we can hear it a few different ways. First off, I have the lid off, so it makes it echo a little better, a little louder. Um, I have it propped up on my leg, and um, this is it bare with no amplification or anything. It's going to be quiet because it's kind of self-contained, and it's a tea kettle, and it's copper, not brass or anything else that can resonate as well. Uh, so here we go. So I have two amps here, uh, different ways of playing each of them. Obviously, whatever you plug this into, you can make it sound like whatever you want it to sound like. But I have a little Honeytone amp. I have a little bigger one back here. Uh, and so we'll play a couple of those. First off, it'll just be a little bit of amplification, nothing crazy. Then we can do some fun distortion with this little mini uh, amp. And then we'll play it a little cleaner, more melodic with the other one. <laughs> So that's just a little bit of amplification. Uh, let's goof around a little bit. Here's a little bit of distortion on it. Here it is with a lot of distortion. That's a fun one. Here it is with a little bit of a bigger amp uh, down here with uh, some chorus put into it. So some glamour shots and some actual studio sounds but before that uh, I'll leave you with something you thought you might never have heard of before which is a heavily distorted version of Angeline the Baker which is what we do in all these videos so uh -huh. 